Welcome. This is Dr. Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This video investigates a root cause of gender bias in engineering. Unreasoned ignorance is one source of bias. This is the kind found when racial or cultural bias is passed on in families or in confined groups. A resolution of this form of bias is out of the reach of IOP technology. But another kind of bias is based on behavioral patterns that become associated with a particular group. If the pattern repeatedly frustrates another group, that continued frustration can evolve into a bias. Now you need some kind of regularity to get a pattern, and whatever causes that regularity can be seen as its underlying structure. We will be using IOP styles to look for this root cause. If you are unfamiliar with IOP, this 8-minute video will provide a quick orientation. Also, the first few minutes of this video will give you insight into the dynamics of IOP styles in actual operation. The sample we will use consists of 5,130 working degreed engineers, 4,266 men and 864 women. Overall, this is a reasonable sample for its intended purpose. Now, pattern-based bias is always created by differences between groups. Those differences can become visible as first impressions, and first impressions really matter in engineering. There are relatively few women, and the first impression may be all that many men engineers ever get. IOP measures first impressions as dominant styles. This is the approach people are most likely to use when confronting an unfamiliar situation. We all have some kind of fallback position. And here are the percent differences in those fallback positions of the number of women versus the number of men holding each IOP style. In categories with large numbers of women, 40 to 50 percent more women than men will choose the action-oriented LP and RS styles. That's a big difference. We can also look at the direction without worrying about magnitude. In 8 out of 10 cases, women engineers favor action as their fallback. And in 7 out of 10 cases, men exceed women in electing the thought-oriented HA and RI options as their fallback. This sets up a bit of a tension. The women's tendency to take action precludes the need for thought. No use thinking about something already done. And thought takes time. Delays and uncertainties can frustrate the woman's ability to immediately address a situation. Now, this is not a compelling case for bias formation, but it is enough to leave something of a bitter taste in the mouth for both genders, and that taste can help build bias in later transactions. And one of the factors contributing to that building up over time is style strength. Style strength measures the degree of commitment to a particular style. It defines how tenaciously a person will cling to a position in the face of opposition. The more they cling, the greater will be the adverse impact on others holding positions that are being foreclosed by that tenacity. The greater the impact, the greater will be the motivation for bias creation. Looked at this way, a pattern-based bias can be seen as a defense mechanism. If you can systematically disadvantage an offending party, you can avoid having your positions foreclosed. And here are the style strength differences between men and women expressed in percents. For example, the average woman is 10.4% more committed to the LP style than is the average man. Overall, women differ from men by an insignificant 1.7% in the fast-acting RS style and only 1.4% in the analytical HA style. In these two areas, any first impression difficulties are likely to be quickly dissipated. The significant difference is the 10% gap in the LP and RI styles, and that gap matters. For example, it can plant the seed for a bias that says women are more stubborn and men are more creative. And this difference is found in all areas of engineering, from aerospace to well, and applies regardless of the kind of engineering degree that a person holds. 
The LPRI difference is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. The dominant style analysis identified differences in general direction, a kind of diffuse action thought discomfort. By pinning things down to specific styles, we can get differences that bias can really sink its teeth into. Things like creativity, specificity, risk-taking, and on and on. And with this kind of specificity, we can get a structural basis for bias. It rests on a fundamental difference that eliminates any common communication ground. On input, the LP is looking for information that fits into some kind of predefined scheme. The RI accepts any random input that looks like it might fit. On the output side, the LP is targeting action that directly affects the issue being addressed. The RI is looking for interim strategies that might be applied. You know, ideas, plans, assessments, that kind of thing. And the processes being applied differ radically. The LP is looking for certainty and precision. The RI is looking for creativity and major gains, and is not bothered by taking a risk to get it. Each party thinks the other guy is paying attention to the wrong things, targeting the wrong kind of output, and thinking about the process in the wrong way. Under these conditions, it is not hard to see how a bias can arise. We do not know if this divergence is caused by nature, nurture, or selection, but it is structural, and it is not going to go away. And, in addition, this tension-generating divergence is being masked. This chart plots the average style strength profile of men and women engineers. Both genders favor the analytical HA style and both put least stock in the instant action RS style. This commonality is what will be seen in engineering transactions involving both genders. The gender-based LPRI difference appears in the secondary styles, you know, the fallback styles. The secondary divergence will periodically reappear on something of an irregular basis. This irregularity tends to mask the tension-generating divergence to all except those explicitly and directly involved. And there's another factor. The average woman engineer's LP style is almost as strong as the dominant HA style of the group. This has both complementary and divergent qualities. The HA and LP share a preference for structured input. They are talking the same language. But they differ on the intended output. The HA stressing thought-based interim positions while the LP is targeting direct action. This output divergence puts another bump in the road. A smaller bump, but still a bump. So, we've got a situation where gender issues periodically pop up and can reinforce any bias that exists. But that reinforcement is going to be subtle. The dominant HA style of the group is nothing if not rational. Bias is irrational and it is something to be suppressed, redirected, or ignored. When it cannot be avoided, the HA is well equipped to explain it away as an anomaly or aberration. It will not be seen as a structural part of the organization. However, social forces make it difficult for real-world engineering firms to ignore the female shortfall. One place to see this is in engineering's advanced leader programs. Here, participants are cycled through various engineering functions and have the opportunity to work with executives who can influence future opportunities. It is a coveted assignment. Our sample included 106 participants in these programs. The woman's 34% participation rate far exceeds the 16.8% of women in our sample. Clearly, an effort favorable to women is being made in the real world. But the LPRI divergence is once again present. These participants are unlikely to counteract any pattern-based bias that exists. In fact, they will tend to confirm it. So, we have a persistent disjoint in secondary styles, a low-grade bump in the road in the primary style, and a tendency to mask gender-based difficulties through the extraordinary rationalization abilities of the dominant HA style. The effect of this combination of factors can be seen in the U.S. Census data for STEM participation rates. Engineering is at the bottom of the pile. 
women are not even considering engineering as a career. And the few women that do enter engineering are leaving at a greater rate than their male counterparts. This chart shows that men leave at about a 30% rate, while women leave at 40%. Women are 15% more likely to leave the profession than are men. The social discomfort generated by bias is certainly one cause of this exit. So we, and by we I mean society, has a problem. So what do we do about it? Well, our earlier engineering studies have given us a start. The engineering personality study defined the behavioral patterns characteristic of the field. The woman in engineering study demonstrated that women have no inherent limitations in the area. Engineering insights isolated the mechanics of the engineering culture, identified its core component, and explained how it relates to gender bias. The women in engineering leadership study showed that the low proportion of women executives is not due to discrimination, but rather to the kind of women that are currently being attracted and retained. Next, we looked into engineering colleges and found that teaching practices systematically disadvantage women. Finally, this study solidifies and adds specificity to these earlier findings. It has shown that women engineers systematically differ from men in their secondary styles. This difference is not an incapacity. It is just a difference. So, we know a lot. But what do we do about it? Well, the first thing to do is to address the issues that arise as a result of existing conditions. The earlier study suggested compensation structures, working conditions, policies, teaching practices, and similar factors as adjustment mechanisms. These kinds of things will go a long way toward attracting women to the profession. The Just Add More Women strategy won't resolve the root cause of the bias identified in this study, but it will temper its effects. Things will get more comfortable and engineering will become more attractive to women. But to address the root cause, we will need to attract a greater proportion of women with stronger relational innovator, or RI, capacities. That will require reorienting and augmenting recruiting efforts. But it's worth it. Success will mean that everyday experience will no longer support a structural bias. However, all of this is going to take a lot of time. It takes four years to get a basic degree, another four or five years to get full acceptance as a peer. A complementary strategy is clearly called for. But first, a warning. What follows can be interpreted as being self-serving since it involves applying IOP technology. However, I know of no other fully validated and operationally proven tool built on engineering's classic input process output model wedded to sociology's focus on the interrelationships between people. It's the right tool for the job. The structural divergence in engineering exists because there is no common ground between distinct segments of engineering. But a common ground can be created by focusing on the specific engineering problem being addressed. And specific is an important qualification. General platitudes like diversity is good are unlikely to register with engineering's highly rational, evidence-based, and inherently skeptical analytical orientation, and is even less likely to be remembered and carried into practice. Engineers are not inclined to take things on faith or authority. But repeatedly showing that a tool actually works to improve engineering outcomes will not be lost on these eminently practical people. These are some of the tools IOP technology offers. You can see the rest on IOP.com. Team analysis is probably the most immediately relevant to engineering. This report focuses on the goals of the group. This becomes the common ground that is absent in the relationship of styles. The report analyzes the interaction network identifying specific exposures and opportunities built into the different styles held by group members. The typical result is that people come to see the value of their own styles in perspective. And more importantly, they see the value of the styles held by other group members. Effectively, 
This cuts the structural cycle of one style frustrating another. It demonstrates how the specific styles of the particular people in the group can be mixed to create an outcome that benefits all involved. It's hard to be biased against a posture that is directly benefiting you. A pattern of frustration is replaced by the rational allocation of talent based on the character of the specific work to be done. This visible and tangible outcome is the kind of evidence engineers can accept and actually implement. IOP technology does not eliminate the root cause of the pattern-based bias identified here. People will still not think alike. But it shows the participants how to manage that root cause in a way that benefits all involved. Behavioral patterns are not the only source of bias, but they are persistent and, if unattended, will reappear. In combination with the other strategies outlined here and in the other studies, engineering can move forward in capturing the talent of women now being lost as a result of gender bias. Thank you for viewing this video. If you would like to learn more about IOP technology, please visit our websites at IOP.com or OEinstitute.org. Both sites have much more information on IOP in the areas where it has or can be applied. Thank you again for your interest in IOP technology.